Mr. Stiers, you played Cogsworth. And Cogsworth is, yes. <laughs> he's, he's quite a unique character in this film. And <gasps> I, I understand you were uh, asked to improvise a lot. So could you talk about <laughs> working with Cogsworth and where uh, Cogsworth's uh, various uh, personality came from? I don't recall being asked to improvise. <laughs> I, 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 I'm trying to be nice. Give him an inch and he'll take <laughs> a yard. <laughs> I, that was Stop. diplomatically put. Uh, I, would, I would get ideas from lines and jot things down and ask them at the end of, of a scene, uh, take if I could go back and uh, I had some ideas about stuff. And occasionally it worked uh, <laughs> rather nicely. If you're after getting me to, to remark on the uh, the moment that, that uh, Robbie uh, asks uh, Cogsworth, how on earth can I convince her that I'm sincere? <laughs> what do I say to her? And my, and my improvised response was, oh, flowers, chocolates, uh, promises you don't intend to keep. <laughs> <laughs> As Robbie is careful to point out, we draw from our real lives. <laughs> Richard, you <laughs> portrayed the, for lack of a better term, villain of the piece. People use Richard that word. Yes. That oh, Richard. <laughs> that villain. Isn't yes. that terrible? He's misunderstood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so could you talk about the, uh, I, and I, I think that that's oftentimes one of the harder parts to play because you want the villain to be a three-dimensional character. You need to be... Uh, a s you don't necessarily want the audience to like you, but you don't want them to m misunderstand completely. You <laughs> want there to be some semblance of reality and truth to it, to the character. So talk about uh, working on well, that level. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm told that he's uh, Gaston is very unusual in in, in the. Uh, the, the Disney canon in that, that he, the villain, a villain who is not ugly, uh, a villain <laughs> who is not mean uh, all the time. Uh, and, and he's not. He, he's, he's very charming. Uh, the women in town fall all over him. Uh, a, a lot of people find him, now they, they do. They find him very attractive. <laughs> I worked very hard to invest him with uh, attractive qualities. Uh, <laughs> but uh, my first, uh, uh, experience of the character came uh, through Howard uh, and through Alan uh, and uh, through the music uh, initially. Uh, then uh, I got to see some of the renderings. Uh, what A lot of work had already been done. Uh, we, we saw images of, of what uh, uh, characters would look like and so you had the opportunity to envision your character in uh, in his the body that they might give him. It, they continued to evolve, but uh, you, you had a notion of what that was, and, and you knew uh, what he was going to, what his music was going to sound like, and, and what his words were going to sound like. And, and so you, you had a, a wonderful place to start. And, and as everyone has indicated, Howard had a way of, of communicating uh, these characters to you on a level that... that uh, he could play all of them. He, oh, and did. Uh, but but it was thrilling. Uh, you, you fell in love with your character immediately, and, and Gaston is a lot to get to fall in love with. I mean, <laughs> he really is. I mean, come on. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what could they mean? Um, so I got the opportunity to sort of revel in that, and, and it, it doesn't really get any better than that. <laughs> so... Uh, Andreas, uh, it's, I think any animator will tell you that the hardest thing to do or to animate is a human form, especially one that's, you know, you want to be believable. So in, in a way, I think you were given a really tough job and at the same time, you were also given the job of, you know, doing this kind of, uh, very, as he said, good looking villain. So there's some extra work happening there, <laughs> extra work happening there. So could you talk about the challenges of, uh, I think actually uh, Gaston started out as an entirely different uh, design, if I'm not mistaken. So can you talk about Yeah, the I evolution? had a little bit of a hard time uh, getting a hold of Gaston visually. I mean, I understood the character from a story point of view and Richard's readings, 
but, but to set his look was really hard because I, I, I took a look at what the story people had done and they drew him as a cartoon character, you know, sort of caricatured with a big jaw like Captain Hook and a mustache. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have some fun with this guy. So I did uh, my first scene, which was doing the opening song uh, with that model in mind, big jaw, big muscles and all that. And Jeffrey Katzenberg, our then boss, said, well, he said, the acting is fine, but he's not handsome enough. And I'm going, handsome, he's the villain. Come on, you know? Yeah. So he said, no, no, he has to be handsome. And I thought, oh, man, does he want like a soap opera star as the villain? How is that going to work, you know? So I got a little pouty. And uh, <laughs> I did. I did. I did some soap opera type drawings of Gaston, which I hated. I said, is this what you want? And, uh, but then Jeffrey called me into his office about a couple of weeks later, I remember. And he said, look, what the story that we are trying to tell here is don't judge the book by its cover. So that means when we meet the beast, he is, hor he is uh, horrible looking, he's scary looking, but we find out throughout the story he has a heart of gold. So Gaston has to have the opposite qualities. We see him and he looks like a handsome young man who should or might marry Belle, but we find out he's a male chauvinist, he's completely full of himself, <laughs> and, uh, and becomes a murderer in the, in the end. to be full of. <laughs> There's a lot. So that has to be clear. And I said, but if he's handsome, that's going to make it so much more difficult. And Jeffrey said, well, nobody said it was going to be easy. And that was the end of the meeting. <laughs> So I understand that one of the big debates going on among, that you actually had a competition for was all about chest hair. Oh, yeah, the chest hair story. Um, <laughs> there was that famous line during the song, and every last inch of me is covered with hair. Yeah. So I handed that scene to one of my animators, and he animated it nicely, except when he opens up his shirt, the chest hair had a peculiar design. It was sort of combed from the inside out, <laughs> like manicured. And it looked slightly unsettling to me. I didn't, I didn't like it. And then the question was, well, what is that chest hair going to look like? And everybody had a different opinion. Is it going to be stubbles? Is it going to be curly? What, what is it going to be? So it became this contest, and then we settled for what you see in the final film. But it became a real issue. 